First day on the road for our 2016 training camp tour. We are having so much fun. We started our trip with a stop in New Jersey to visit the Jets. Then we moved to West, out west, to the Steelers camp in western Pennsylvania. And today we are in Richmond, Virginia, a visit to the Washington Redskins. Yeah, we got a good crowd out here. And as you can see, they're out there playing a little catch. D'Angelo Hall is out there. He will be joining us later along with Kirk Cousins and Josh Norman. Ryan Clark joining us now. Ryan, you played here for three years. Super Bowl champ Ryan Clark also joining us for this conversation. He didn't win a Super Bowl with the rest of us. I know. He won with the Steelers. <laughs> sure. Okay, Steelers okay. fan. Thank you. Right. Thank you for clarifying that no for right. all of us. Welcome back in. Thank you guys for being with us. Stephen A. Max Kellerman also here. So since we're in Virginia, obviously a uh, conversation, important conversation that's been discussed, controversial topic is the name Redskins. So we want to dive into the actual name here. Team owner Dan Snyder has stuck by the name even when coming under fire for the use of it, which many people deem racist as it refers to Native Americans. Max, tell us how you feel about the name Redskins. Well, first of all, I won't use the name. Um, and, and I think people, especially from cultures of the oppressed, should relate to this. But even if you're not from that, just as, a, as an empathetic human being, you should also try to understand it. Now, there's a, a, a poll in the Washington Post that said 90% of Native Americans polled are not offended by the name. First of all, the methodology has been questioned by an offended Native American tribe has questioned the methodology. But even, but even, even besides that, let's say the poll is accurate. I'm not worried about the 90% who are not offended. I'm worried about the 10% who are. Now, recently, uh, uh, the origins of the name have been uncovered. Originally, people thought that it, it referred to it referred to the scalp, right? The red under the scalp, yep. and it had this, this kind of disgusting origin. And recently, it was found that's not even the case, that Native Americans referred to themselves yes. that way as they referred to Europeans as white-skinned, Africans as, as black-skinned, etc. But I'm not worried about whether or not the origins of the name are pejorative. Over time, it came to be a slur. If you look it up in the dictionary, it will say a slur for Native Americans. Now, even if it wasn't a slur, can you imagine if a team was called the such and such whites or the such and such blacks? It just a, I mean, because it doesn't refer to a single tribe. Mm -hmm. It refers to a word encompassing all Native Americans. I also would be uncomfortable with that. There are, furthermore, there are words that, that we used for black people that were not considered pejorative decades ago, like Negro, for instance, which today have taken on a negative connotation. Certainly it's not politically correct, and certainly you would feel uncomfortable calling a team by that name. So culture changes meaning over time. Just imagine for a second those who disagree with me of the Native American child in this country who comes from a household where the, where the culture of the household does consider that a slur. And that Native American child is looking at his NFL team saying the NFL team is okay and the NFL by, by a, a, a connection is okay with saying this word about me and, and my culture and who I'm from and my family, I think what this really boils down to, because I don't think this is that hard to understand, is Dan Snyder is a billionaire. Billionaires don't like to be told what to do. They're not used to it. And so, of course, when the Washington Post poll came out, he doubled down. We will never, all caps, change the name. Where's my camera? I want to just tell Dan Snyder something. That, I'm disappointed in you. But I will be proud of you when the day comes, because it's coming, where you will be at the podium announcing the name change, because that will happen. Listen, I, I've been here. Yeah. I played for the Redskins for three years. I've been around Dan Snyder. And you talk about a man being a billionaire. This doesn't come from billionaire Dan Snyder. This comes from Washington fan 
Dan Snyder. If you've been around him and seen the way he is with his players, seen the way he is about this team, he's not about this team as in I'm here to make money off of them. He's here because he loves this franchise. He loves the players on the team. So for him, he's looking at it from the fan point of view. When you started talking, you can hear the fans kind of going against you or, or opposing some of the things you said. And that's exactly the way Dan Snyder feels. I agree with you in the sense that if it offends anybody and it can be changed, I think you should look into changing it. The NFL isn't going to make Dan Snyder change the name. It's going to have to be on him. And as long as he feels this way, there isn't going to be a change in this because he's not looking at it from all the ways you just explained, which I agree with. You think about the 10% that are offended. You think about those who don't even believe the poll was conducted in a way to where it is telling and true as to how the Native Americans feel. If you look at it that way and you're a man that empathizes with them or even sympathizes with them, you think you can change the name. Because names change. If you look at the origin of the name, it started as the Braves when they were in Massachusetts. And then you move to Washington and you change the name. But for where we are as a society, they don't see that as bad. Many of you remember when Monty Jones went on the Mike and Mike show yep. and his shirt said Caucasian. Mm -hmm. Right. When that was done, there was a reason he had to eventually zip it up. Because the people who make the decisions aren't Native Americans. We talked about it yesterday. The people who make the decisions aren't African Americans. They are rich Caucasian males. And until they start to feel differently about these things, things won't change. And we can sit up here and talk about it as much as we want. We want to. They will not change. Particularly when you don't have leadership from the commissioner's office on issues like this in the form of Goodell. Hard to imagine Adam Silver not taking a much more Listen, active stance about this. point is great, it's, though. It's such a double standard. It's different in the NFL, right? Your bonus check comes from making those dudes money. Like you're saying leadership by Roger Goodell, he doesn't lead them. Let's get let's get that out of the equation. Let's stop talking about it. When they were sitting across from the table negotiating during the lockout, if they said something off the wall to the players, Roger was not, oh, hold on. When Jerry Jones got upset and moved from the table and said he was leaving and went stood by the door, Roger wasn't like, hey, come sit down back at the table and talk to these men. He doesn't lead them. He doesn't rule them. He doesn't get to tell them what they are going to do because he won't be renewed. He won't get that bonus. So until these owners, now if other owners put pressure on him, but guess what they are too? Billionaire white men. Who and don't it's not, like being told well, what to do, Ryan. <clears throat> Look, we have to be real and honest about something that's very, very important here. Max, I hear all your points. Um, they can't be disputed for the most part. I agree with you. And as far as I'm concerned, you know, I, I hearken back, and I've said this on many occasions, thinking about the late Jack Kent Cooke being interviewed by the late, great George Michaels, a dear friend, a mentor, a great man, particularly here in the Washington, D.C. area, George Michaels' sports machine, uh, when he was interviewing him. And Jack Kent Cooke was like, I ain't changing anything. And then he interviewed George Michaels, interviewed Charles Mann. And Charles Mann was like, it, if it offends one person, that should be enough. Daniel Snyder and owners beg to differ. Here's where it gets tricky and it gets dicey. And we have to be honest about this. If you uttered the N-word, what African-American do you know that will look at a white person and say, you know, it's all right. You ain't going to find too many of those. It's universally recognized that it is highly offensive. The problem with the Redskins name or any or anything like that as it pertains to Native Americans is that they see they seem to be divided amongst the ranks. When you do polls and you find out a certain segment of the Native American populace doesn't find it offensive, whereas there are more who do, they seem more divided and not as universal in their thinking and their belief as African Americans are with the N-word, as Jewish folks are with certain things that are considered anti-Semitic. The list goes on and on. It's that universal. It's that it's 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 that universal mentality that ultimately permeates. Because if the entire Native American community stood up in unison and there was no divide, and and and, and Chris Cooley or Daniel Snyder or somebody else couldn't put a poll together.
where there is a, a, a large segment of folks out there who happen to be Native American who did not feel that it was offensive, then there was no argument. There's no argument that Daniel Snyder can make. But it's the fact that you're able to lean on a segment of the Native American populace who don't find it offensive, who have come out front and center and said they don't find it offensive, that they don't deem it as racist. Okay. That's where it's problematic. I'm only making that point, Max, to say this. I believe that if a large segment of a populace says it's offensive, that should be enough. But it's hard for me to engage in a level of condemnation as much of a disenfranchised community as the Native Americans are in the United States of America. Nobody, not even African Americans, have been as, as squashed and reduced to the realms of irrelevancy, more so than Native Americans. It is indisputable. But having said all of that, if you're still able to find a lot of people within the Native American community, who says that the Redskins' name is not offensive. I'm not saying that you are wrong for feeling the way that you feel. What I am saying is Daniel Snyder is a little bit less wrong for feeling the way he feels when he's able to point to people from the Native American community that support his position. Um, first of all, the Native American community is not one community. It was many, I agree with many that. different nations I representing that. diverse point of views. Uh, much harder to kind of categorize them ethnically as one kind of cohesive ethnicity that will speak with one voice. First of all, no ethnicity speaks with one voice. Right. Right? But, but in particular, Native Americans, it's difficult. It's many different nations and tribes of Native Americans. Secondly, this country did a number on Native Americans, unlike, I mean, and, and so part of the, uh, the reality is Native Americans don't have a voice that other ethnic groups have, and and making it even more difficult to really gauge but and the put little your bit of voice that they do, the but, the, but the little bit of voice that they do have, it's somewhat divided. Like I said, you can't. Find, I, I, let me tell you something right you now. You could this come notion. up here and say there's a there's a word that I'm as a black man I'm perfectly okay with people using, and you can second it. And a, but and it a couple ain't other the word. But, but it ain't no, the word. No, no, but the other thing is, what are you saying is that both sides you. You can argue on both sides and so everybody comes together in unison it's not good nothing's going to give unanimity practically but if you said no i'm okay with this word and so did you and so did other but but there was a segment of the african-american population that was deeply offended by it i as a socially conscious individual would say i'm, I'm okay that you Listen. feel that way and i'm not a black man Listen. but as a man i'm not okay with using the word but that's you though that's, yes, that's you. That's me, and this that's is my you. point of view. And you also have to understand, and they this don't is the see point it as, of view of many people. They negative, though. Like, Daniel Snyder doesn't see it as negative. You see it as negative if we do. So you empathize with it. That's not how he sees the name. He sees it as a name, and he said it. It was it was a name that was meant to honor the Native Americans, well, no. and he, he well, believes that. Do you see it as so negative? When, so when, but I see it as negative if the Native Americans do. Do you see it as if negative? I see it as, ne I see it as negative. Yes, I do. But the flip side again. Is the, listen, we're talking Matt, about it on, not being a name here's anymore. The deal, here's the deal. You can say whatever you want. I'm trying to tell you, for all the white folks out there that want to sit up there and talk about, well, you know, in, in, in the communities, I mean, it, there's white folks that can sit up there and use the N-word with black folks. Go ahead and do it. I dare you. I double dare and you. By the and way, watch what happened. Because universally, nationwide, if not worldwide, you use that word is going to be a problem. There are there are, 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 are words that you can use in the Jewish community. Universally, they're going to have a problem with it. Even in the gay community. I remember that I talked to our colleague, LZ Grandison, and I said, one of my issues was, I said, we understand that the F word is highly offensive, but could you highlight for me what else is universally offensive so we'll make sure we know the problem with the redskins and the native american community is that the native there's a populace within the native american community that's saying we don't find it offensive Stephen at all a. that a. gets very tricky Stephen it a. gets tricky the the um naacp that's colored persons right if that was not an african-american organization if that was i would have a problem with it wouldn't you what you made well, it, what, why is Dan Snyder or someone who is not from that group making that decision if there are members of the offended group who are offended? 
because it has to be it, it's I close. It has to be unanimous. It, it, it has to be as close to universal as you possibly get. When you talk about the NAACP, so. the National, you know, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, mm -hmm. there are plenty of white folks who are members of the sure, NAACP. Yes. Sure. But here's the reality: white, black, Hispanic, whomever's a member of the NAACP, they have one vision, they have one voice, they are Steve lockstep Ray. in unison in terms of colored, their belief. They're not divided. The word, They're not divided. The word colored is not as offensive, obviously, as the N-bomb, and right. some might even say, no, because I'm from an era where that I was... Wish it was that, I, I, I wish the, it was a different the name. The point is, we know what that is, and it's certainly, at the very least, politically incorrect, and culture has changed over time, and I'm not worried about the etymology of the word, or the origins of the word. I'm worried about the little Native American kid who is offended by his football team's name, and it's got well, to you, change. Well, well, I will say well, this to you. This is a this is like the fifth time in two weeks you've been very very concerned about the kids, That's the right. children. I got and three let me, kids. Let me say this to you, and I applaud that. I'm a dad myself, but let me be very very clear. If that is your concern, you're gonna have a long life, bro. Because a lot of positions we take on various issues, kids are watching. But you believe what you believe, and there's a segment of that populace out there that do not find that word offensive. So to me, it's an issue that the Native American community has to find a way to come more together on as opposed to looking for people Guys, outside of their community gotta, to do it for them. We got to leave it there. And yes, maybe that would create some change. But in 2016, it is still hard to believe that a team name is after a shade of someone's skin Look color. Look it up in the regardless. dictionary. It says slur for Native Americans in the dictionary. When we come back from Richmond, Virginia, Ryan Clark is dictionary. staying with us. Yes, he spends a lot of time there. Will Michael Vick be back on the field next season? We'll discuss. And could it possibly be in Dallas? That is the question. More first take from Washington. Damn. I didn't know what to say there. We don't want no small